So I'm going to talk about how to use your phone to shoot uh, video or your tablets. So somebody said, and I don't know who it is, so I can't attribute it, uh, but somebody said the best camera to shoot with is the one you have with you. Now you might be thinking, but the one I have with me is just an iPhone. Well, I want to show you something. Every shot of that beautiful video is shot on an iPhone. So a phone is not a detriment to the quality of video you, you can use. Really, it has more to do with how you do it. Your smartphone has a great or good camera. Usually pretty great, especially if it's an iPhone. Um, and like I said, the quality of the video you shoot depends on applying some of these simple strategies. Don't shoot vertical video. Do not do it. I will not be happy with you, and I will send you nasty notes if I see it on your websites. Um, there are two apps you can shoot vertical video in, Instagram and Snapchat, but most of the video you will be shooting, shoot it horizontally. Oops. Why? Well, on most of the things that most of our readers will be viewing it on, it's easier to see if it's vertical or it's horizontal. Um, on a computer, it will be, it will fit the screen better and it will be bigger on phones. If a, a video is vertical on a phone, it usually ends up being pretty small. Also, if you shoot it vertically, you end up with those beautiful black pillar boxes on the side. Uh, we don't want that. It takes away from the screen and uh, it just, it looks bad. Uh, and another note about how to position the camera is always record from the camera on the back of your phone. There are very few instances where you would want to shoot a selfie video. Um, use the one on the back, it's just going to look better. Don't shoot video indoors when possible. Do shoot video outside when possible. Now this can be a challenge, of course, because a lot of things we do are interviews with people. But if you can, ask that person to step outside for a few minutes or at least get them in good light. Um, that's the key. Outside, there are, there's better lighting from the sun. Colors pop, people look more vivid. You're just going to get a better shot in natural light. When you're inside and under fluorescent lights, it washes people out, it can throw off the white balance, which will make people look yellow and just not very healthy. Uh, but if you are outside, you also have to make sure that you are not shooting into direct sunlight or that you're backlighting your subject. So don't turn the camera towards the sun because a lot. our first instinct is to say, oh, I don't want my subject looking into the sun and having to squint. Um, but you also don't want your camera looking into it because all that camera does is it wants light. So all it's going to absorb is the light. Um, so it will mess up the shot completely. And also th that backlights your subject and their faces usually appear dark and you can't see them very well. Uh, so you, the best thing to do really is to have them kind of turn sideways so the light is coming towards their face and you're not shooting at the sun. So put the sun to their left or right. Don't let the blob creep in and ruin your video. Do be mindful of where your fingers are and straps and cases. Uh, there are a lot of good videos that have been ruined by a pinky finger or a thumb or something creeping into the shot. 
Best ways to avoid that is to actually look at the screen while you're shooting. Don't look past the screen at your subject. Um, make eye contact with them, but make sure you're looking at what's actually on your screen as you shoot it. Find a grip with your phone that's comfortable that keeps your fingers out of it. And then find a tripod. There are a lot of little phone tripods um, or even selfie sticks that you can use to that will hold your phone so that your fingers don't have to be anywhere near it or anywhere near the camera lens. Don't go back to the era of silent film. Do make sure you're not covering up your mic. This is something I have done more times than I can count. Uh, because when you're grabbing your phone, you're not thinking about it. It's that little dot, depending on your phone where it is, and you just you cover it up, and then you go back and look at your phone, your video, and you think, "Oh crap, I've got no sound." So again, know where the mic is. Yeah. Anybody it's can find it? on the bot. Usually the iPhones, it's that little dot at the bottom. So if you've got your finger there, you've got no sound. It used to be on the top too, and that made it very difficult as well. Uh, so again, find a way to hold your phone that you're not covering up the mic. Uh, accessorize. There are external mics that you can find for your iPhones or your other phones. Um, some have lav mic mics like what I'm wearing now. Um, some have boom mics uh, that will help pick up sound a little better. Because if there's one downside to using your iPhone or your phone to shoot video, it is the sound. Um, so getting an external mic might actually be a great help. Um, and then one thing I always do, and that's how I've found a lot of times that I don't have sound, is when you're shooting, go back, watch the first 10 seconds of the video and make sure you've got sound on it. Uh, before you let your subject get away. Because yes, it's embarrassing to say, sorry, I had my finger over the mic, I didn't get our interview, we need to record it again, but that's better than not having a video at all. While we're on the subject of sound, do keep the mic as close to the subject as possible. You're gonna have to do this by getting close to your subject and using your feet to move closer so that they can be heard. Um, some people get a little skittish when you start coming at them and you're getting closer and closer with your phone uh, because they think you're blowing out their face, like they're, you're gonna be really close in and they, th that's very uncomfortable. Um, so I always tell them, yeah, it looks like I'm really close, but within the camera lens, it's not as close, but I need to be close to hear you so that the sound is clear. Um, Eliminate the competitors for sound. So try to record in a quiet place where your subject is easily heard and isn't having to fight the background. This can be really hard, especially in a breaking news situation um, or in a meeting situation where there's a lot of people milling around. So that's why getting an external mic is a good idea. Um, you can find one for $20, something like that. So uh, even if your newsroom could buy one to share among the reporters, it's a good idea. Heather, can you show, you and Kara stand close to each other and show everybody yes. kind of an optimum range and distance, so, because I know so. it's not a comfort level, they're going to have to overcome that. So one thing is you want to make sure the framing is right, and so that, the framing is right. you got to be that close. That's going to make a lot of people really uncomfortable because they're going to think, you're way too close. Pores. Yeah, you can see your pores, but, but you can't. It's a good shot. The framing is good. Um, you want to make sure your subject is large in the image. You don't want to be standing across the room and you know, trying to be, get sound and a good shot. And so, always communicate with yeah. your subject that, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little closer to you. I want to make sure you're framed correctly and, and I can pick up the, the audio. So make sure you're communicating, not just walking right up to them. Yeah. Um, because they'll keep walking backwards. <laughs> Don't let every video you take look like the Blair Witch Project. We've all seen the Blair Witch Project, right? The advent of shaky cam. Yeah, we don't, we don't want that. We want to keep our phones steady. So there are a couple ways to do that. The first is to kind of make yourself a tripod. 
stand with your arms braced at your sides and hold your phone like this it'll keep it steadier uh, if you're in an area where you can find something to prop yourselves up this is not actually going to be very steady because I have to bend over this far um, but if you can make your a tent out of your elbows and hold it like this it'll keep it far steadier than just here especially if you have a big phone or an iPad because they're heavy so we we tend to jiggle a lot more um, the other thing like I said get a tripod you can find some um, even at the dollar store they have really simple ones that you can strap your phone into um, and just hold and even holding just that the, the legs of that little tripod will be steadier than you holding your phone don't miss out on a great video because you ran out of space this is a tragedy and I will tell you about my recent tragedy here in a second uh, do know how much space is on your phone before you go out on assignment or make sure you get more so Two Fridays ago, I was at the Better Than Ezra concert in Noblesville. Uh, Better Than Ezra is my favorite band ever. And they invited the ladies in the audience to come up on stage to dance during a song. And I was like, well, hell yeah, I'm going up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm 38 years old. I don't care. I'm going up on the stage. Um, so I went up on the stage. And of course, being a media person, I was like, I got to take video of this. Got three seconds of video because I didn't have any space on my phone. Um, very sad and disappointing. But uh, so to avoid things like that happening to you, maybe not on that kind of stage, but um, when you're doing your reporting, you can find things to help you expand your storage. Uh, some phones, not iPhones, but some phones have a micro SD card that you can slide in that'll give you extra space. For iPhones, there is an expandable storage, things that plug right into the lightning port uh, that will give you a little extra space so that you have more room. Um, you can also make sure your phone's uh, automatically updating to Google or the cloud so that you have that information somewhere and it can be deleted off your phone. And a good practice to get into, and this is what I didn't do that week and why I ran into the problem, was to either delete video when you're done with it or transfer it to another storage device like your computer or an external hard drive on your computer and find a schedule to do that. Do it regularly. Do it every week, do it every two weeks, depending on how much video you're shooting. When you're shooting video, don't zoom in and expect to get great visuals. Do use your feet to zoom because the camera on your phone is a digital zoom. It doesn't actually zoom in, it just blows out the pixels. Uh, a regular still photo camera has an optical zoom and that's why they can use telephoto lenses and things to zoom in. Your phone doesn't have that, so it doesn't act the same. Uh, if you want to get close to a close-up of a subject, you're gonna have to get close. You can't stand back and expand the screen. Uh, you're going to have to use your feet and get close to the subject. Uh, and again, accessorize. There are uh, small telephoto lenses available that you can add to your phone uh, that range from the cheap. Um, I've got a wide angle lens and another, I think it's like a two or three optical lens um, that I got together for like 20 bucks. Uh, they're small, they usually have a device that help you hook it on the phone. Um, but then there are some really expensive ones too, depending on what you're looking at. Another thing that can make for a very disappointing video is when you look at it and, oh, it's focused on something other than the person or the object that you're, you're trying to do. So do remember to set your focus. On most phones, it's really easy. Uh, when you're looking at something, it will, well, it's too dark in here. It doesn't want to focus. Um, I also have my fingers in the way. Um, if you double tap, you'll see that little yellow box and that's what it will focus on. Um, I think most phones, most Androids have that, but it might not be yellow, but uh, on the iPhone, it's a double tap to focus. Uh, also, don't try to move quickly. If you're panning, if you want, if you want a nice pan shot, you know, to add to your video, 
um, or you're trying to follow action, don't move quickly. The zooms on the phones don't respond well to it, and you'll get a really blurry image. Um, most phones, as I said, have a box uh, that you can focus with, but it also is good at recognizing faces, so it will usually blink around the face and tell you that you found the right spot. All right, so um, what we're going to talk about now is the devices that you use to capture your video as well as editing software. And I was always taught that the best camera is the one that you have on you. So um, I'm going to talk about higher end cameras, but don't worry about that because like I said, whatever you have available to you is the best camera in any instance that when you're covering a story. So. Um, basic guidelines. The first thing that you want to do with interviews is you want to get the framing correct. So Heather touched on it a bit. Um, I use my friend Jim to show as an example of the rule of thirds. So when you're framing and you have your camera, you want to make sure that your subject, that the subject that you're interviewing is in one of those four dots that are intersected at the center. So that's just, that just makes it more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and you want to make sure that the way that they're facing, if you can see, he's somewhat um, facing to his right, my left. And that area that's open is the talk space. So you want to make sure whichever way they're facing, that they have more talk space in their room, just like that. Can you, now when I try to take a photo, it automatically has the grid on the um, You can, you can turn vid on and off. Okay, it's just in your settings sometimes. Yep, yep, so, let me see. I'm just going a little bit slow. But most phones, and I'm sure probably Android does too, have um, a setting where you can turn the grid on and off. So that'll kind of help you, but you can also just eyeball it to see. He should be shorter space on one end, longer space, that's the talk space on the other end. Another aspect of catching or capturing good video is the different types of shots. So you have your interview, you've done your interview, which essentially that's pretty much the, the first thing I try to get when I um, go out on a story, whether it's breaking news or whatever the case may be. I try to get the interview because that helps with the narration as far as the B-roll that I capture. You want to um, write to the the what the subject is talking about so if he's mentioning certain things in his interview you want to make sure take a mental note i want to get shots of this for the b-roll b-roll is what you lay over your interview and it helps to um, basically move the story along and it shows a visual of what's around so if you're out on a scene let's say a car accident you, of course, want to get shots of the accident. All of the cars in the accident, you want to get some shots of the police officers interacting with um, whomever's on the scene. You might um, have some shots of the PIO right before you do the interview. But it's important to have a variety of shots. So for example, you want to make sure that you have a close-up shot. Close-up shots are really good for transitioning um, within your um, video edit. A medium shot is also necessary. So a medium shot example may be of one full car, but you don't see the entire intersection. But that gives the, the reader and the viewer an example of uh, just different points that are at the scene. And then of course you want to set the scene. Some people call it an establishing shot. That's like the first thing that runs, but a wide shot of the entire scene. Having all of these shots with these different with the different variety of angles allows you to tell the story much smoother and it gives the, the reader or the viewer a better idea of what's going on. 
So like I said before, the best camera you have is the one, the best camera is the one that you have on you, but there are options. It looks like most people here are using cell phones. Um, so I'll kind of go through this pretty um, swiftly. A DSLR camera uh, or one of those larger cameras that most of the photographers use. There are some pros and cons with using that. So overall you'll have better quality of images. You can shoot in high definition when you have a DSLR camera. Um, you have a variety of lens options. So for example, like what Heather said a little bit earlier, you don't want to zoom in on an iPhone because when you zoom in on an iPhone it's not going to be a good picture. You have to walk closer. But if you have a DSLR camera that gives you that option with the different lenses to get closer to zoom in and still have high definition. Uh, you have better flexibility with your manual settings so you can adjust the zoom, the exposure, you can adjust the ISO which is like the light that comes into the camera. Um, it's kind of like the barnyard doors, that's what my teacher taught me. You want to keep the barnyard doors um, to a, a a decent level so that your scene is not blown out or too bright. Those are things that you can adjust easily with DSLR, but the way things are moving with technology, and I know there's going to be like an iPhone 8 that's out, a lot of these manual settings are being adopted into um, phones. I'm not that familiar with Android, but I'm sure it'll be somewhat similar to having those manual settings available. Um, and then it shoots better in low light. Like Heather said, um, if you can avoid it, don't shoot inside and if you can, shoot outside. But with the DSLR camera, they give you a little bit more flexibility with um, shooting in lower light indoors. The quality will be a lot better. So I'm about to show an example of a video that I shot in graduate school, which I'm probably gonna cringe a lot because now looking back, some of the shots could have been a little bit better, but it'll give you an example of the different um, variety of shots. It'll show you the quality of a DSLR. I used it with uh, a T3i Canon, not a full frame DSLR camera. Uh, full frame cameras, they allow you to shoot for longer and the quality is a little bit better than um, just the regular DSLR camera. So I'll just play this for a little bit. Uh, I'm the owner of Bakang, a Chinese uh, traditional medicine store, which includes Chinese herbs, acupuncture, and nutrition. I'm a third generation. The uh, store has been in Chinatown, the same location, since 1986. You can put it on your wound. This? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is fine. And then put a coffee frying though. That's $2. Uh, we came here uh, in 1979. Uh, originally, my father came here purpose is to cater to the uh, Asian community here. Uh, because we are familiar with this kind of medicine, we uh, looking for the same type of medicine um, where they get it from at home. Okay, that's not an issue. Okay, so uh, our price, uh, our pricing is very competitive, and he's very friendly to the people. So he gain um, clientele quickly. However, the non-Chinese, the Western uh, uh, customer, come in because they're curious. They heard about it. Uh, they looking for alternative, uh, but there weren't a lot of alternative available out there, or at least they're not um, uh, effective. I've been coming for non box for the last maybe 25. So aside from the shaky video, you know, I went full on Blair Witch Project on this. But other than that, um, you can see as far as the framing for his interview. Let's scroll back to that. Um, you can see he had his talking space, which is um, in on the right hand side. So the way you can set that up. Um, with your iPhone, it's a little bit hard if you don't have a tripod. That's why if you can get a tripod, it's good to get that. Um, what I do as far as some tips is I would either hold it in front of me and then tell my interview subject to look past my ear. But sometimes when you're having a conversation with them, they can get caught up and they'll end up looking at you anyway. So that's why with having a tripod, you can set it up kind of like a reporter sandwich where, for instance, the camera was actually right in front of the subject. So if you can see, I put the camera right in front of him and then I stood 
to the right. So he's looking at me during the interview. So that's one way to ensure that you have that um, the lower third. Um, took some different shots, angled shots. Have like a kind of like a close up right there. You see the action. You have to pay attention to the nat sound. Nat sound is basically natural sound. So if you're out on an accident, it's like the cars and things going on in the background. A lot of different elements with that. A wider shot and different angles. So all of that put together makes a story. So as far as cons with the DSLR, of course it's expensive. Uh, most DSLR cameras, if it's not a full frame camera, it'll only record in 30 minute intervals. I had to learn that the hard way when I was shooting an interview and then it just cut off and then I didn't realize that it wasn't recording. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, there's no built in editing software on your iPhone. You basically have a one stop shop right here. Um, and then with the DSLR camera, they also require audio, additional audio recording attachments. So I use uh, uh, a Zoom H1 or a Rode mic. Those are normally used with DSLR cameras. So for mobile apps, um, I, I think it's perfectly fine to use the camera that you have available on your phone without having to buy any additional shooting uh, apps. But if you want to be very particular and you want it to be even closer to a DSLR shot, they have different apps that are available. So I listed those um, for iPhone and Android in the prices for them. Um, I've only used, I believe, Movie Pro before. I haven't used Pro Shot. I downloaded that one just recently. Um, and the quality is pretty good. And it allows you to do those different uh, manipulation to the to the actual video. So you can adjust the white balance, you can adjust the exposure and things like that to brighten up your, your, um, your images that you're videotaping. Um, for editing, so after you've shot your video, whether it's from the standard camera or from one of these apps, you're gonna wanna edit the video. So um, I'm not sure if everyone's downloaded an app already, but we'll get a chance a little bit later on today to actually try that out. We'll have you go out and shoot and um, do some editing with that. I love iMovie for the most part when I'm out covering stories, I shoot, you have to shoot separately. All of these apps, as far as editing, you have to shoot separately and then import them into the app to edit them. Um, I haven't found an app that encompasses all. I believe Kim Master may, because that's the one that I just found. Um, but for the most part, you have to shoot and then import them. iMovie allows you a lot of flexibility. You can separate the audio from the interview. You can scrub it um, to drag it underneath the B-roll. So that makes it easier for editing. Uh, you can add text slides, you can add lower thirds, and do all of that within the field. So I've gone out and edited a video within about 40 minutes or so, and then submitted it back over here so that it can be up on the website, just like that. Um, some notes with Android, I noticed that with the apps that are available like Quick or Adobe Premiere, and um, I'm not sure with Action Action Director, but um, they're really simple editing. You can't really separate the audio and do one of those shots where you have the B-roll and the interview is underneath. It's pretty much you import the footage that you have, and it'll you can either do a voiceover of your own voice narrating what's going on, but you can't really um, adjust and move clips on top of one another. So that's the only flaw that I tend to see with what's available in Android. Um, so I want to show a video that I did a week ago or so. That's actually, I actually edited a video with iMovie. This was where the Banksy art is actually next door at the public library. And I believe this video took maybe about 45 minutes to edit together even though it's only, you know, about a minute or so. Join Fantasy Movie League today. Compete against we just bear through the pre-roll. Movie lovers to win movie tickets, swag, and more. All for free. The fall season is starting now, so don't wait. It's, this is awesome. It's my favorite venue so far because this is really the type of place that, you know, we intended to display the rat. 
you know, we're a good public facility where anybody can come and see it. Uh, you know, take it to places where people haven't been exposed to a lot of street art. You know, maybe you've only seen Banksy pieces on Facebook or, you know, on, on the web. So, you know, the reaction here has been wonderful. The people have been great. And uh, this is my favorite place to show it. So you can see in this clip, I was really close to his face and he was okay with that. So um, all we have in here in our office is uh, we have a shotgun that's attached to the phone, but still, even if you do have that, you want to get close. The only time you would have flexibility as far as moving diff uh, a distance away would be if you have a live mic, like what I have on. All right, so what makes a good story? You all know the answer to this already. You're reporters, you write stories every day. It's no different when you're doing it with a video. But I wanna show you a video here. Uh, this is Andrew Stanton, does anybody know who he is? No movie buffs. Uh, he brought you Wally and Toy Story and Bugs Life and all those great Pixar movies. Never thought the price of a laundry upgrade could be so low, or saving on a refrigerator could give you chills. <clears throat> Labor Day savings, never say never. Get our lowest prices. Make sure you go to Home Depot. Our lows. On major mm -hmm. like the GE stainless steel sweep, only at the Home Depot. Okay. This was his TED talk from a couple years ago. And I won't show you the story he actually tells because I don't want to offend anybody, but. We'll start with his description of what story is. It was funny, needless to say, <laughs> but kind of dirty. Storytelling so. is joke telling. It's knowing your punchline, your ending, knowing that everything you're saying from the first sentence to the last is leading to a singular goal and ideally confirming some truth that deepens our understandings of who we are as human beings. We all love stories. We're born for them. Stories affirm who we are. We all want affirmations that our lives have meaning. And nothing does a greater affirmation than when we connect through stories. It can cross the barriers of time, past, present, and future, and allow us to experience the similarities between ourselves and through others, real and imagined. The children's television host, Mr. Rogers, always carried in his wallet a quote from a social worker that said, frankly, there isn't anyone you couldn't learn to love once you've heard their story. And the way I like to interpret that is probably the most greatest story commandment, which is make me care, <coughs> please, emotionally, intellectually, aesthetically, just make me care. We all know what it's like to not care. You've gone through hundreds of TV channels just switching after channel after channel, and then suddenly you actually stop on one. It's already halfway over, but something's caught you, and you're drawn in, and you care. That's not by chance, that's by design. So I got me thinking, what if I told you okay. my history with story? How I was born? Uh, and if you haven't seen that before, I highly suggest finding it um, on YouTube and watching it. It's an excellent TED Talk. It's one of my favorites. Uh, but I love the point he makes there. Stories 
make you care. And in video, that is more, maybe even more true than in print. Good stories, good video make us laugh, they make us cry, they make us get angry about things, they make us cringe, they make us think about a subject, and they make us empathize with people, no matter what that subject is. So in your news reporting, you're probably going to run into two different kinds of video. The first is a breaking news video. This is when you're capturing what you can as you can when something's going on. Uh, you might be filling in the gaps for people uh, with what they're seeing by doing a voiceover while it's recording. And this is something you're probably not going to do a lot of editing to because it's happening now and you want to share it with your readers now. Spot news, accidents and fires, natural disasters, um, obviously Harvey. There was a lot of video that was coming out that was very raw, but it was also very powerful because of what they were capturing. Um, anything that's unplanned or spur of the moment and something when timeliness matters. So I would have loved to have had this video here and Scott Miley has seen it, uh, but when we made the switch from Tout to Field 59, it got lost in the ether somewhere. Uh, but one of our reporters, Ken DeLibestine, was out on a manhunt after a robbery. They were looking for two guys. And he literally, this is all this video was, was him standing at the end of an alley as two officers and a police dog made their way down the alley. And they keep walking and they keep walking and occasionally the dog barks. And they keep walking and then the video's over. That is all the video was most viewed video in the history of the Harold Bolton because we put it up on our Facebook page and people were wondering what was going on because this was a massive manhunt shut down the north half of town and part of it was because he saw the opportunity with a dog to shoot something as it was happening and people kept watching and kept watching waiting for the dog to find something so it was a little misleading perhaps to the readers um, but like I said, breaking news, we got it up, we shared it with our readers, they loved it. The other type of video you'll take is a feature video. This is something where you're going to arrange interviews ahead of time. Uh, it's going to require some editing to pair your interviews with visuals. And it's kind of more telling a story than just relaying information. Cats. Dogs, kids, great feature videos every single time. Whenever we have a story, and Mike Scott Miley can attest to this too, whenever we have a story that's cat, dogs, or kids, I'm like, you're doing video, right? Because it will get watched. People will share it. They enjoy those type of things. Uh, feature videos are great for community events. Uh, if there's a festival going on downtown, and uh, you can go out and get a few interviews with people, get some shots of what the action is doing. Uh, you've got a great video that people will like. Personality profiles. Uh, this may be uh, you have a new president of a company coming into town or you have a lawmaker in town. Uh, you want to do a little more in-depth interview with them if they're new to their position. Uh, you can just sit down with them, have a nice long interview, and then go with them to where they live. And maybe that's not exactly where they actually sleep at night. Uh, but if, they, if it's about them being the CEO of a company, make sure you get into their office or see them walking around the plant. Um, if they're a uh, theater personality, make sure you go with them to rehearsal or something like that. Uh, so just show the little bits of their personality. Anytime there's an innovation or something new, people love new things. That's one of the best uh, video subjects you can do. So if you're something new or something innovative happening in your community, make sure you get video of it. Also, I always tell my reporters, if you sit down with somebody and they tell you a story and then you get back to write it and you're like, man, they tell the story so much better than I ever can, then that's an opportunity for video. Because if the person themselves is a storyteller, it's going to have much more impact if it's coming straight from them. And that's always something that can supplement your print story. So this is a video I did last Christmas. Um, you'll have to forgive some of the audio. Uh, you'll hear what I mean here in a second. But this is Shops with a Cop. 
shop with a cop or kids and cops or I forget what we call ours, but. It's a very special day. It's a very special day in the city of Anderson. There's sadly to, to say and admit there's so many people and Andersonians that's less fortunate than most. This is more than likely the only Christmas that they know. And they will I was very lucky to get the ho 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 in the background the there. Police are, are able to facilitate that and, and to be a big part of that. And it is so meaningful for us to do that and be part of the community and show that we are part of the community. Thank you for joining us here. We've got the red cop for the program. The program basically. Unfortunately, I had to shoot this part of the video where he was standing because he couldn't move from that spot and it was very loud. And I wish I would have had him mic'd instead of just had the shotgun mic. Thanks to the elf for walking through. As they volunteer their time to come out here and, and because it means so much to them, because they know that today's youth that is our future and the um, less fortunate that is. My favorite shot of the entire thing. Helping those people that, that, that really need it. And that's why they became a policeman when they did years ago. No matter how new, uh, at least the amount of seniority they have or how, how, how long they've been a policeman. A little bit of shaky cam there, but I still wanted to use that shot because she kisses the horse. I mean, how cute is that? All right, what's your name? Isabella. And what did you get today? Horsey. Do you know what you're going to name it? Um, no. No? Why did you pick the horse? Because he's cute. <laughs> That's just a little something I like to do on my videos is put a coat on the end after you see the produce by. Um, just if you have a moment that's really cute or really special, um, I like doing that with mine. Was most of that on tripod or? Um, most of that was our actually our big camera on my shoulder, so that's why some of it is a little shaky. Um, trying to get around people and being hit by carts because people don't realize that you're shooting video. Yeah, but uh, yeah, most of that was a, a big camera. So sometimes you're gonna kind of combine the two. You may have a breaking news event that you wanna make more of a feature video out of. This is a video I shot entirely on iPhone um, <coughs> during the regional final two years ago for Liberty Christian. Um, they had a pretty amazing thing happen at the end of the game. Uh, go ahead. Stop that for just a second. So we had actually been following Liberty Christian because we were pretty sure they were going to go to state. They had gone to semi-state the year before, and we saw no reason they would, wouldn't go to state that year. Um, and so we'd been doing videos all season with them. And so I started the very first video of the season with this definition of a lion because that's our mascots. And then I changed it as we went along. So it, it made a nice, it made a package of videos once we were done. It's a shot from the stands because that's where I was. The unbelievable shot by Liberty Christian Junior Robin Williams. Voice over. Exclamation point on the Lions' third straight regional title. Mm -hmm. Still basking in the glow of the victory, Liberty players attributed the win to a higher power. Um, I feel like uh, I was just with me and God and the teammates. Uh, we all was with each other. We believe in each other. We never gave up. And that's what it's all about. We're all champions. We're champions together. You can't win championships by yourself, especially in a game with five players before the team. All I could really think was I was just proud of my teammate, Ryan. That was nothing but God's plan for us. So we're just happy that we got the win. 
this one to the next game. It shouldn't have been that close towards the end, but you know, we let them hang around for too long and we gotta give credit to them. They played their butts off tonight, so we gutted it out and that's what championship teams do. William shot in overtime was the second miracle playing for the Lions. Senior Franklin Nunn drained a three at the buzzer at the end of regulation to send the game into overtime. Uh, okay, quick time. lesson there. I don't have video of the, of the first shot <laughs> because it was the end of the game. We thought they were going to lose. I was also tweeting at the time, um, so I was more worried about getting the tweet. Uh, we were pretty, there was like, I think there was three seconds left. Um, and so it was the end of this kid's career. It was kind of sad. Didn't get the, vi the video. And then he hits a big shot that sends him into overtime. So if there's a chance, even the smallest chance, <laughs> take video. My teammates believed in me, and they, I just seen it going up, and when Ronnie passed me the ball, I just kept believing in myself. Oh, the ball through like Coach told me, and I seen it go in, and I knew that was nothing but God on my side. Oh, I, I tear it up, actually. I couldn't even see, I couldn't even watch it, but I, I, I cried a little bit. But that was very nice, and uh, I'll play it for Frank Lee. Get that shot. We never quit. That's what it's all about. At the end of the regulation, I was just praying. I was on the mid, so I was just praying for something would go, and I didn't have any much control over it. And I say, we can't go on more overtime. We're, we're cramping up. We're, you know, and Ronnie hits that shot, and that thing just hung up there. And that was divine intervention. Another lesson from that video is, like I said, we had been following these kids. This was their third straight regional title. Uh, so these kids knew me. They were comfortable with me. Uh, so developing relationships with your sources, uh, especially if you're going to have to get them on video, is really important. Makes them more comfortable when you stick a camera in their face. So to kind of sum up, make me care. If you do, you've got a good video and you've got a good story. All right, I'm going to talk about some more ways that you all can incorporate video into your reporting, um, namely social media, something that we do a lot at the News and Tribune, and maybe you do as well, um, particularly when we're covering live events, big events in our community. We'll do a lot of live tweeting, and that'll include um, photos and video. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we've also used video to tease to um, a special project or series or an event um, in the community or maybe an event that your paper is um, organizing or part of. Um, and then I'll briefly touch on live streaming. OK, so like Heather mentioned, one of the things that you'll be using video for um, is breaking news. Um, we had an example of that in February, um, a luxury apartment building in New Albany that was just near completion. It was the gem of the, of the city. Everyone was really excited about it. Um, it caught fire and most of it was um, demolished as a result of that. So it was a pretty big thing in our community. It happened on a Saturday. It was just a reporter and I staffed. Um, we were competing with local TV from Louisville. So we knew that we had to be updating our readers throughout the day, um, filing updated stories throughout the day as well. So what you'll see here is at the end of that 10, 12 hour day, after inhaling all that smoke and not eating and being exhausted, um, I was not going to take all that footage and edit it together. I just didn't have the time, didn't have the energy. Ideally, you're always going to take um, this video that you post on social me media and put it together in one place, whether you use Field 59 or whatever you use to upload it. In this case, um, I could not do that. So what we did instead is took some of the um, tweets and embedded them into a content box on Town News so that they're right here on a rail next to the story. And what's nice about this is that readers can choose which ones they want to watch or don't watch. It's in chronological order, so they can kind of see it unfold throughout the day. Um, another way you could do this, and I think I have an example, is um, you can embed the tweets into the body of the story in Town News. I would only do that with you know, two or three tweets, depending on um, kind of what the story is or how long it is. We wouldn't want to embed all these into the body of the story because it would get too cluttered, obviously. So that's one way that you can use video and social media to do your reporting and then repackage it later so it doesn't go to waste and readers can always go back to that coverage. Okay. 
We also had Abbey Road on the River Beatles Music Festival in Jeffersonville this year. Again, it was a big deal. It was uh, typically held in Louisville. And we also we covered that several days, and this I think was another Saturday assignment. Um, and we wanted to give updates and kind of put people there at the festival throughout the day, so we did that. But in this case, um, I was able to take all that video and cut it together and upload it to Field 59. Um, so that definitely took more time to you know trim some of those clips and put them together. But again, I'm using mostly just cross dissolve, so it's not too involved or too much time. And I did that all in my um, on iMovie on my iPhone. And all the videos you're seeing there are videos that I tweeted out throughout the day. Okay. And lastly, most recently, the solar eclipse coverage. Um, same thing here. We had two reporters in two different counties at two different events. Uh, same with two photographers um, to cover local solar eclipse events. Um, and then I also went out and was live tweeting photos and videos. Um, not only was that a, a live event and a big event, but it was very, um, you only had a, a small window of time to catch this. So we really wanted to make sure that we were on the ground and um, showing people as much as we could. Um, this is, I don't know if anyone is familiar with Storify. I just used it to compile the tweets so you guys could see in one place. This isn't how it published, but um, so here are some of my videos, just like scene setters, interviews with different people. Um, we had someone who was on site with like conservation officers and interviewed experts, um, things like that. Um, the stuff that I tweeted out was really just supplemental coverage. It wasn't put used. The interviews weren't uh, used for a story or anything like that, um, and they weren't put with a story at the end of the day, but. Um, just to have all that live coverage that we could. And one of the reasons why I wanted to use this example is just to show kind of how you can spread out the workload and how everyone can kind of team up and work together. Um, sometimes a reporter may not be able to handle it, um, so that maybe the photographer can help, or a digital editor if you have one, or another editor. Um, so just something to think about, and I'll touch on again later. I'll show you some examples of how we use video to tease to um, special projects or events. We had a five-part, five-week opioid epidemic series um, not too long ago. And what we did is filmed this kind of teaser trailer videos leading up to each week to kind of give people a sneak peek. So here's one of those. Staff reporter of the News and Tribune. This is the fourth week of our series, highlighting the towering influence of opioids in our community. I looked into how the drug crisis is costing billions for employers. I'm going to tell you how local businesses are fighting the problem and how others could be. This week, you'll also learn how addiction has torn into an area family. Pick up a copy of the News and Tribune, or visit newsandtribune.com Saturday, the full story. And be sure to check back next week for the final installment of our series, Crossroads of Crisis, Heroin Epidemic Demands Solutions. And what was really nice about that is not only were we teasing uh, the next installment of our series, it was nice to get uh, reporters on camera so people could kind of meet them and become familiar with them, um, especially throughout the series. 
Um, for this, we did partner with a local production company. So they had a studio space, they had um, equipment that we didn't have, and they also did some of our editing with us. It's something I think I would encourage um, papers to try, partnering with people in the community who can help you with this. Um, there's definitely some quirks that we had to work through and communicating and making sure they're on the same page of what you're looking for and deadlines and things like that. But I do think it um, could be a beneficial partnership. Okay, um, This is an example from Kara. You might be able to tell more about it. Basically, you had one year anniversary coverage of the tornadoes. Um, and this was a um, trailer video that um, Kara made and posted to social media, to Facebook, um, leading up to it. And what I like about this is it's, it's really nice. I think it's compelling. Um, it's a good trailer, and it, but it, it wasn't so involved, or at least it didn't look like it was so involved. So. Okay. I was home, sitting in my chair by the window, watching TV. And the phone rang, and, and it was my brother, and he said, get in the basement now. And for some reason, I got up and went, because the time before, I didn't go to the basement. And I got my dog, and we went down there, and I could watch out the basement window, and the trees were just swaying back and forth. And as the tornado struck, the trees started like the one in a circle. And when I come up, half of my house was gone. There you go. Oh, that was really nice. So that was just a photo. Just thinking of like a quick edit because it doesn't have to take that long. It was literally a photo. I did a Kim Burns zoom out and added some text slides. And it probably still took me about 20 to 30 minutes to edit, but um, yeah, it can be simple things. Yeah, you don't need a studio and all that equipment. All right, so we'll move on to live streaming. Um, I'm curious to know if anyone in here, if you all have experimented with live streaming or use it on any kind of regular basis. Anyone? No. Um, we would like to get more in the habit of, of doing it as well. Just some examples of what we've used it um, for in the past. There was a um, opioid epidemic panel um, at a church in our community, and so we live streamed that um, when we did our five year five year yeah five year anniversary coverage of the Henryville Henryville tornadoes. Um, we partnered with a Louisville station and had a big event, um, and that was live streamed as well. Um, the Netsby Awards. Um, we've done in the past uh, when we were using Facebook Live or not Facebook Live, but Periscope on Twitter. We um, would live stream uh, press conferences. We're trying to figure out how to work Field 59 into that and use it the best way we can. Um, it's also great for um, when you're on the scene, headed to the scene to communicate with readers what's going on, um, and then do behind the scenes stuff. Um, I know a lot of uh, local TV stations they it's they do it all the time when they're on a um, live cast, even on a commercial break, you'll see them live streaming there from the desk. Um, so I think it's something that um, we should all try to incorporate more and kind of experiment with. But, and that's that. Any questions on any of that? Cool. OK, so just a couple of things to keep in mind um, to make time for video. I know everyone's busy, we have small staffs, it's hard to work in. Um, like I mentioned before, one thing to think about is how to share the workload. So don't put it all on the photographers or all on the reporters. Sometimes they can't uh, juggle that along with what they're already doing. So if um, a reporter is slammed, maybe they're reporting and they're live um, tweeting or, or something else, um, and maybe ask the um, photographer to, to help out with video. Um, or other editors, if there are editors who can help as well. Um, Identify kind of the, the most efficient way to work it into your day. So know your deadlines, know what your workload is for the day. Um, if you want to do more kind of feature videos, like three minute long videos, um, that's great, but that's not something you're going to turn around in a day. Um, so just be realistic about um, what you can fit into that day or that week. Um, and for those longer videos and long, longer projects, just plan ahead. Um, you need to make time to identify um, the subject of the video and set up interviews and locations. Um, you want to give yourself time for editing and to have somebody else review it. So just plan ahead as much as possible. Um, 
and repetition, I think Kara mentioned this before, the more that you do this, the more you use these video apps and shoot, um, the easier to get and the quicker it will become, so it'll be easier to work into your, your everyday. So just keep those things in mind, be willing to experiment and be patient. Work it in. That's all. Kara? Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess my um, last couple of takeaways, uh, kind of within the same vein of what you were just talking about, but don't be overwhelmed because it takes time to learn these apps. And as we see with technology, it's always changing. So there may be a new feature in the app that you downloaded today, next week. Mm -hmm. You'll have to learn that one. So don't be overwhelmed and just kind of, you know, try to stay on top of it. But it's not the end of the world. Um, because we're constantly learning, I'm constantly learning like today. I didn't know anything about the Kim Master separating the audio. Um, I would say to challenge yourself to try to incorporate at least one to two videos a week if you have that availability. And it doesn't have to be something that's so in depth where there's multiple interviews and stuff. It can be kind of like today where you got one interview sound by a few shots of B-roll, upload that onto um, your stories and challenge yourself to do that at least once or twice a week. Um, and the videos don't have to be long, they can be less than 60 seconds, honestly. Um, always remember good audio is key because people will um, watch crappy video but they won't listen to crappy audio. And remember to hold the shots for 20 seconds. Um, if I can leave you with one thing, and I think speaking for digital editors, uh, we gave you a lot of tips, a lot of things to do, a lot of things to don't do, a lot of apps to use, uh, but the thing we want you to do is shoot video. Uh, if you have to do it vertically because it's a fire that's happening right now in front of you and you forgot to turn your phone around, that's fine. Um, if it's a little shaky because you don't have a tripod with you because you got sent out to the fire and it's back in your, your dust drawer, that's fine. Um, get the video. The point of this is kind of to help you make better videos when you can, um, but shoot the video. Don't miss an opportunity to have something that your readers are going to latch onto and share and view um, just because you, oh, it doesn't look good enough. That's fine. People watch really bad video every day on the internet. Um, so just capture the image, capture the moment, um, and you'll be fine.